Okay, we are recording this session, and this is another spontaneous uh, study session. This isn't really a study session as much as it is an introduction to some uh, uh, very powerful study tools that you can use to help you uh, achieve success on the exam. Um, so these are uh, uh, documents that I pulled together for the uh, 2008 NEC, um, and were, they proved to be uh, very effective study tools. Uh, for that cycle of the test, but Sarah, uh, Sarah Raymer, a uh, Soul Power People employee and uh, NABSEP PV installer candidate who's sitting for the test on, uh, on March 24th has gone back and modified these documents, these study tools, so that they apply to the 2011 uh, NEC. So with that, um, uh, I'm going to Turn it over to Sarah, and uh, and she can tell you all about these tools. Okay, we got some uh, some audio here that I need to correct. So I'm using Mike Pelosi because he's uh, he's got some some phantom noise in the background. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I'm ready to roll. I guess. Okay, well, we'll start off here with the primary document. Um, can everyone see this beautiful purple and green Excel document? I'm assuming that you can. Um, all right, so um, what I find it, it, it works for me to, to fit this into my screen so that I can see more than one thing at once, so that's what I'm, I'm going to do here. Um, the legend is up here at the top explaining um, how to read this document. It's really pretty simple. Um, bold things indicate a narrative from the 2008 NABSEP study guide. Um, the pale green that you see here, uh, these are links to problems from the NEC uh, 2008 study guide. Uh, underlined links in the second column here uh, are links directly to another sheet that has a, an exact, exact clip from the 2011 NEC, uh, NEC codebook that you can uh, reference to get a little more clarity here. Um, what you see here are, uh, this document, first of all, was put together by Richard uh, a while back and based on the 2008 code. Uh, and I modified it and cleaned things up to go with the current code that we're working with for this exam, the 2011. Um, so uh, this uh, first column here is just claims that it's from the NEC, accrediting where we got that information. The second column is uh, the article number. Um, the third column is uh, a reference to what that has to do with. So as you can see also, um, the, these bolded things here, uh, 3.7 performing a system checkout and inspection, uh, that's specifically from the section in the NEC 2008 study guide. Um, I have that here as well um, to, to show you uh, what I'm talking about there. Okay, so go back over here. For an example, as you go through this, you might say, okay, 110.2 equipment approval. You can look at your NEC, uh, this is the highlighted document that we have. Uh, this is uh, the 2011 code book um, that we've highlighted specific things in it that are um, pertinent when dealing with photovoltaic systems. So um, the first number of pages are um, are really just um, some information that is interesting, kind of, but not so important. Then we get to the index, which is actually very important. I would really suggest spending a little time with this so that you know how to use it because it's going to help you find things more quickly. Um, as you get up to Article 110, <laughs> bear with me. Um, okay, so we can scroll down through here, and you'll see certain things have been highlighted. Um, so 110, now. I won't promise that all of this is absolutely precisely cohesive, but what you can assume is that the stuff here in the, in the study guide database here, 
uh, is relevant. And what you see in the 2011 highlighted code book is also relevant. So between these two documents, bouncing back and forth, you're really going to get a good idea of, of the things that you need to familiarize yourself with. Um, 110.2 equipment and approval. Well, you need to look at that. So 110.2, here we go, right here. Article 110.2, there's equipment approval. Um, should probably highlight that. Um, so that's, that's just an example to start with. 110.3b, manufacturer's instructions. So that's something you need to consider, the manufacturer's instructions. We've got that here. Um, you can go through this entire 879-page document and find these things highlighted throughout. I apologize for um, the updates in the code book were already highlighted gray. In order to highlight those, to point them out, I had to put another highlight on top of that. You can see it, especially if you zoom in a little bit. It becomes easier to read, but I apologize for that being a little hard to read. Um, the beautiful thing about this document is, is this. So you can click on this. It's going to take you to exactly uh, um, the key point that, that we're wanting to get you to, to pay attention to here. Um, <laughs> uh, you may also see sometimes this will say, uh, shall be installed in a workmanlike manner. This one's pretty simple. Often you'll see uh, an article that will say, should follow through requirements of A through E. Well, A through E might be two pages long, and so that may not be in here. You're going to have to look to the code book to find A through E so that you can clarify all of that for you. And you want to go back to that initial page. You can just click this little arrow down here at the bottom, um, the one that takes you all the way to the beginning, and then there's your page one. As you go through, you'll see, um, okay, let me go back to explaining how this works a little bit. So we have our numbers. We have our documents. This bold is referring to the, to the study guide section 317319. So if you download this, which you can get off the, um, if you just Google NEC or NAVSAT study guide 2008, you can find that pretty easily and download the whole thing right here in the top, in the, in the index or the table of contents rather you'll see 3.1.7 um, is right here, working space, which is clarifying um, exactly that. Um, as you go through here, you'll see a lot more. Um, there's pages and pages and pages about every one of these things to really help you understand them completely. Um, lastly, this problem is from the end of this which this is a great study guide because there's like 90 problems in the end. Um, as uh, you probably heard, hopefully, the problems at the end of this study guide are not specifically what you're going to have on the test. Haven't taken the test, but from what I hear, don't expect to see these exact questions or anything really, really exactly like them. Um, they are designed by different people and therefore are valuable information to test your knowledge, but you're going to need to know how to do all of this and more. So don't assume that if you can answer these questions that that's enough. Uh, these uh, pale green links are specific problem numbers. So we see uh, problem 75. So I want to see um, what that problem is. Get back down here again. Oh, I'm going up. I've, I'm crisscrossing between a laptop and a, and a PC, and I keep getting my scrolls backwards. Um, all right. Almost there. OK. The minimum depth of working space in front of a charge controller for which the input voltage never exceeds 60 volts DC is. Um, now, this is telling us that we're going to find information about that here, which is straight out of the code book. Table 110.26A1 uh, clarifies the distance for us. Um, and this is, uh, this, is, this is very important here, but what we're really talking about, um, well, now I'm going to make sure that I'm answering the question here. Uh, these are distances that I've seen on another, oh, here we go, right down here. Uh, all this is very important. You'll probably have a question about this. And uh, in fact, 
if there's not one in here. I'm pretty sure there is. Uh, there's one on one of our um, question sets on the website for sure. Uh, but this mentions a working space of 30 inches shall be provided. So there you go. Um, a lot of clicking back and forth, but if you have a Mac, you can use this handy feature to go back and forth between your Excel and, and your Acrobat. Um, or you, uh-oh, I closed it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, does that does that work? Does that make it something that we can follow? Does, should I go into, should I clarify things a little bit more for you guys? What do you think, Richard? <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I would uh, uh, add a couple of few things. Um, uh, do you want me to? Uh, to, to I can um, go further. Uh, I can go further through the document if you'd like. For example, um, well, I just want them to, to understand the order of things. Okay. Um, you know that it's basically in the order of the NEC, and uh, maybe some, okay. some navigation tips and tricks. Um, okay. All right, I can do that. And, uh, all right. So. Okay. All right. Okay. So for oh, and I left this other document out. All right. So, Article 100. That's going to be um, it's like definitions, and um, I'm still learning on memorizing what specifically all of these articles are. Um, but um, well, this is broken up. Hmm? Into uh, sections. Uh, Go ahead. It, your uh, your 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 uh, Excel isn't showing right now. It's just kind of a white screen for us. So oh, I think there's a problem okay. with the, um, uh, the connection or something. I'm not. Hmm. I'm not. I'm not. It took a second. I, I see the, the frame of the uh, the study guide database, but I don't see anything in it. It's just kind of like a locked up thing. Oh, huh. it finally, finally, finally popped up. Okay. All right, it took a second for it to do that for me, too. Sorry about that. I think uh, maybe I have too many things open. Um, okay. All right, so Article 100 is going to be this first segment. The color will change as we get to the next article. Um, then, and, and as, as I said, these all link to pages. These are your sheets, which you don't really need to worry about about those, but if you wanted to, you could hold your cursor over this. Well, it's not, I gotta get in there. And it will tell you what sheet. Eh, it doesn't really matter so much, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna link you back specifically to that sheet. Um, then to get back to page one, again, click this far left arrow to take you to the big thing, and that'll take you back to page one. As you scroll down further, you're going to see uh, the color will change again to get us to Article 300, and so forth as you get through um, each article. Now, when you get um, each chapter, rather, as you get further into this, you're not really going to want to go back all the way to, to number one again, because you see on your screen starts at 300, and you want to be able to, to stay where you are. So if you were to go to look at Article 400, um, um, 400.1, you want to go back to the beginning. Now you can click on this back to page one. That's going to take you to the top. Um, to save yourself a, a little headache, you can click on one of these links, use the bottom left back arrow, then go to page one. And that's going to take you back right where you were. Um, so we have our, uh, chapter three, chapter four. Uh, there's nothing on five in here. Uh, chapter six, 690, obviously pretty extensive here. And then seven. Uh, we have um, in chapter nine, there are these tables, and, and these are the specific tables down here at the bottom. And then these are links. Uh, and this is one thing that Richard can help clarify for me. So this is the OSHA 1926. If you want to look at uh, subpart E, which for, is, I believe is personal protection equipment, uh, let's click on that. And that's going to take us to a web link. It's going to open it up, uh, specifically take us right there, and we can read all about it. So this is really an invaluable thing 
to help us with the safety and OSHA standards. Now I'm going to use my handy shift Apple tab key to go back. Um, so that's how all of these are going to work. Um, I think that there was one or two that was a little weird for me. Um, subpart C. This is just general. So it's kind of an overview. Um, I, I guess my question was for you, Richard, was that uh, this doesn't have a lot of information. It's just sort of a, a reference um, to things. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure uh, where in the um, uh, 2008 NAPSEP study guide um, it referenced subpart C, but it did. So if it was referenced there, I just made sure to include the link to that subpart. And um, uh, okay. can you scroll up a little bit? This is the I'm overview at the top, of C. Yeah. So, okay, right. can you scroll down? And uh, I think what I did before was I clicked and went to OSHA.gov, and it gave me an option to purchase the entire article. Um, uh -huh. I don't, I don't, I, 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 you know, don't, uh, I wouldn't bet money on that, but I know at some point in here it told me I could purchase whole, the whole article. The best thing to do would just be to take an OSHA class, <laughs> but uh, at least we have an <laughs> overview here um, to give us a hint, yeah, and, and we the, know. We... Go ahead. Right. Yeah, this is, this is just a link to the OSHA uh, codes, and, and, um, uh, to my knowledge, they're all posted on this website. Every part of OSHA is available and accessible to to anyone. I mean, you can buy a big, you know, uh, uh, OSHA 1926 um, uh, uh, book if you wish, but uh, um, you can also use this website to to access all the information. So right. So each one of each one of these links is going to take you to OSHA. Um, and, and explain exactly what they want you to know in that subpart. All right, and then as we go farther down, um, this one, uh, one so of these. So your, your screen what, is frozen. We're not seeing anything but uh, the 1926 subpart C right now. Okay, I'm sorry. You might just have to wait right. for a second. Um, <laughs> what I did was I, I went back to that Excel document and I clicked on the next color changed line that was the IEEE Standards Association link. Mm -hmm. um, that takes me to a website, uh, the IEEE Standards.org website. That's the one that said, you can buy this. Uh, and I, I went, followed through to see how I would buy it. And it was like, I think, $105. Um, so, you know, there are, <laughs> there are some things that are a challenge. And, um, but the the point is at least this document's gonna tell you where to find that. Um I I mean I, I think that there's so many resources that you need to digest to really, really, truly understand this technology. Um you just need to try to, to get all of those resources and, and pour over them little by little and this is just one more. Um can you see the the website yet? All I see is overview no. of the part C. Yeah. Mm. Can you see the so, Excel document? I cannot. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh, okay, it's, it's finally come up. <laughs> finally there. Okay. So we don't, you don't really need that IEEE website. I just wanted to show you that that's what the link went to and that um, that's something that we will work on um, refining in the future, I believe, because I don't, uh, that was one thing Richard and I have both been really busy. Richard's been really, really, really busy. And um, I wanted to uh, ask him about that, but we didn't get a chance to completely clarify that because it says that it links to in, um, something to do with inverters uh, is the standard. Now, I do believe that if you were to go to the study guide and, and look and, and read what you have here on the 3.5.8, are you seeing the Excel document on the screen now? Yes. Okay. Then you would, that's just to let you know you need to re review that section um, pretty thoroughly. Um, and then the UL 1741, uh, 
that's also going to take us to another website. I, I'm probably taking a risk to even click on that link. I probably shouldn't even have done that. But the point is, um, this this document is full of links that uh, within itself to take you to many pages of information that refer you back to where to look in the code book, uh, and then also external links to find more resources that connect to specific um, things that you need to know. Um, there's another document. Now, are we? can you see this one okay? The highlighted yep. NEC pages expanded? Okay, this is um, something that has been put together by a few different people as well, and I updated it. Um, this is sort of the same information with a, a little more, um, there are a few things in here that you won't find in the other um, because it was, well, I don't know exactly how to put it. I guess done by two different people at two different times that thought different things were important and um, they're, they're relatively um, the same, but I would just use them both as you may. Okay, so let me explain this one. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, this uh, I'll, first I'll give column, you a little clarity on the, Sarah, okay. I'll give you a little clarity on the differences of the, the generation of these two documents. One of them, okay. the, the one on the, the left there with the purple and green, um, was uh, a function of the uh, references that were made from three different documents. The um, uh, the permit inspection checklist, which is on the uh, CD of the Jim Dunlop uh, textbook, made, made a reference to all the ones that aren't bolded and do not have hyperlinks. Um, from that inspection checklist, uh, they reference these, these codes, okay? Um, and then the, uh, the other source was the, from the 2008 NABCEP study guide, either from the narrative or from one of the problems that were asked in that, in that, uh, uh, at the end of that study guide. So um, uh, those were, were the uh, three sources of references. That was the only qualifier that was used when determining whether that reference would be included in this, in this guide, in this document. The other one, the highlighted NEC, includes most of what, if not all, of what was uh, uh, um, put in the study guide data database. Uh, but uh, it's uh, the, the highlighted NEC pages was any page, any article, anything that that um, I uh, could recall from taking the test or from 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 you know studying photovoltaics that I thought might be relevant. Um, and uh, and I'm sure it's missing many, many things, but it was my uh, attempt at making a comprehensive uh, listing of all those parts of the NEC that had uh, to do with photovoltaics potentially. Um, and, and, and I highlighted the 2008 NEC code book for that. So that's the distinction between the two, two documents. Um, so, and the, the, the reason for making a, the, the, the highlighted NEC pages expanded, the justification for creating that document was that, uh, uh, it, you know, to have an 880-page document that has highlights in it somewhere, you know, on maybe 100 of the pages, means that you've got to, to, to click, you know, through the document one page at a time trying to find where that next highlight is and it takes a long, long, long time to do that. Um, so by having some kind of an index that can point you specifically to the page number within the PDF that pertains, then um, uh, that can drive you straight to that part of the NEC code that, that matters and you don't have to click a thousand times to get to the next code reference. So that's, that's the difference right. between the two. Okay. Did you, have, um, did you update so, the page numbers as well? Just out of curiosity. Yes. yes. Okay, this is and that's <laughs> the most important page. thing. I mean, yeah. That okay. was the primary edit that I made. There really wasn't much else that needed to be changed except for a, one or two things that weren't there anymore um, or had moved mm -hmm. to a different place uh, and, and so forth. Um, so this document uh, will help you so you don't have to scroll forever through that huge 879-page NEC document. This will tell you specifically what page to go to find what you want out of this document. So if you want equipment approval, 110.2, you're going to look over here and say that's on page 34. 
that way you can go straight to it. Now I will say, um, let me give you an example. Let me go to a, a fun one. Um, so let's say I want to go to Article 300. I've got Chapter 3. I've got my tabs down here. Chapter 3. Whoops. All right. So let's say um, 31015B3C, conduit exposed to sunlight on a rooftop, page 152, 31015B3C, um, okay? This is the table that you're going to find in the book. If you have the book, I, I think that it's very, very valuable to open the book and find it, like physically find it so that you are familiar um, with touching the code book and knowing what page to go to. Here, 310.15B3C says page 152. Now, the digital document isn't completely perfect with the code book. So I said page 152, I think. Let me double check that. 152. Okay, so this is where my document takes page 152. But as you can see, the code book pages are a little off. So the actual page here is 149. So you'll need to go forward a tiny bit more, which is just a matter of scrolling down um, to page 152, where you will find the actual chart highlighted and, and ready for you there in, in real life. Okay, so those page numbers were meant to line up with the actual PDF page number so that when you typed in 152 or 154 or whatever, it brought you straight to that page number in the PDF. Not necessarily the page number that listed in the document, but so that people can actually type in the page number and have it jump them to that, the actual you know, um, image of the, uh, of the table. So did you line it up okay. with the, the true number of the page or the, the PDF number? I lined it up with the true number, but it would only take, I don't think it would take long um, if if you guys want me to, I can, or Richard, if you'd like me to, to change those to the PDF number. Um, those are the actual uh, numbers in the code book, which is really just usually maybe two pages off. Um, right. I guess I yeah, thought about it was that. because I knew that the, the the first part of the document was all this this, this other stuff, right? And that was variable. Um, being able to to type in the number and take it take you straight to that that page was was the intent. That's how the original one was. But um, uh, but we can update it. You know, I think that would be a little more useful than than because uh, it's already it's already kind of hard to know what you're looking for. So, so to, to get to a page and then have to think, well, maybe this is, isn't on the page, and then, oh, maybe I need to go forward a couple of pages, or maybe it's back a couple of pages, that's, uh, that's wasted time. So I think uh, um, we'll do an update on it, and we'll send out a, a new version that has the current page. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a true PDF page number. Okay. As opposed to the true paper page number. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I'm not sure what else to cover here. I think that's the, the primary resources that we wanted to share with everybody. Uh, the highlighted at NEC 2011 that uh, shows all the pertinent information. Um, the uh, highlighted pages expanded to show you exactly where to go for each chapter um, and what page, which we will update for you with the PDF page. Um, and then this wonderful uh, 2011 study guide database. If you go over all of these things, um, you're really going to get a good handle on where to find things in the code book and, and, and what you need to know. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Richard, for giving me those things to work with. Oh, thank you for doing it. That's a lot of work, I know. Um, <laughs> But I think uh, going through the exercise is going to help you a lot when when you're taking that test and you're you're trying to flip through the pages. You're going to have that visual memory of having seen all those parts and pieces somewhere in the code book, and you'll you'll be able to to to, to navigate your way through and get to what you need. So um, so I, I think the burning question now is 
how do I get access to all these documents? And I'm going to go ahead and take over control of the, uh, the, the desktop here. Um, and uh, okay. And I'll share my desktop. Okay. And we'll go to the solar MOOC. And uh, <clears throat> you guys should all uh, have in your inbox now the, uh, the, the email. If you signed up for the solar MOOC newsletter, the email uh, indicating that uh, day 17 is is uh, is available. So uh, when you go to today's newsletter, you'll see uh, two links. Okay. The, uh, the first is the <coughs> highlighted 2011 NEC. So to gain access to this highlighted 2011 NEC, you click. Uh, all right. Okay. Yeah. So you click that link, and then it brings you to a landing page. Okay. And uh, this is a little misnomer here. Up here, it shouldn't say contact us. It should say fill out this form for the uh, to to access the document. And by by putting your information, which it should auto populate because you've already signed up for the MOOC. Um, you click submit, and then it brings you to a. Because here is your 2011 study guide database. Okay, so you click there and start to download. Uh, I don't know what that's about. Hold on, let me see if this download is occurring. Okay. It is not. Okay. So this is uh not working properly. Um let me try it again. Or rather, let me try here. I'm going to try the other document and see if it makes a difference. Okay? And that is the, the 2011 study guide database. So I'll click there to download. And it brings you to a page where it says contact us when it should say something else like, you know, fill out the form to access the database. You click submit. And it brings you here to the 2011 study guide database which appears to be taking us straight to the blog. Okay, so we've got a problem with our, uh, our linkages here. It is not working the way it's supposed to. Um, I'm going to try one more time, going back to the highlighted NEC. Okay, go to the solar MOOC. Okay, highlighted 2011 NEC. I'm going to test this one more time, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to ask you to hold on for a moment, and I'm going to go uh, investigate. <laughs> Study guide database, and nothing. All right. Okay, um, Sarah, I'm going to turn it back over to you, and uh, you can field any questions that people might have specifically about the study guide. Um, and uh, in the meantime, I'm going to try to work this out. So I'm going to change your role to presenter, and I'm going to go try to figure out what's going on with our links. Okay? All right. You got it. Okay. Share the desktop. I'll be right back. Does anyone have a question for me? I'm going to turn on the, the chat so I can see it, um, although I believe I can hear you. Um, 
I see that someone is trying to speak, but it's coming through as static. So if you'd like to type something here in the chat box, which if you're not sure how to bring that up, you just go to the, um, there should be a little tab near the top of your screen, hopefully. And you can just go there to the little chat box um, with the quotation and click on that and it'll open the box to, to write a message. Says Richard speaking, but that's just the wind. Um, so I'm just going to talk about this a little bit more until I get a, a question, um, until someone interrupts me or types in a question in the chat box. Um, it looks like there are 13 people in attendance. So if you're there, just um, write me a question in the chat box. Um, I'm not an expert on these things, but I'm learning them pretty quickly. And uh, this, this document, editing this document and updating it has really helped me a lot because I've been forced to go article by article through the code book. Um, I'm also watching the Mike Colt DVDs. Um, and one thing that was clarified between Mike Colt and Bill Brooks um, in that DVD is that the, the changes to the code book are not so much big changes as they are clarifications of rules. So if you are familiar with the 2008 code book, then you might, um, this shouldn't be too much for you. You just have to realize some things have, have moved around. Um, what was the most difficult concept to master is the question that I've got. Um, well, right now, um, I'm finding that I've got lots of resources that uh, tell me how to calculate um, voltage sizing for my system based on the temperature correction um, to, for safety and for performance. Uh, I've been told to do it four different ways. Uh, an article I read in Solar Pro said one way. My advanced professor um, at ACC showed me another way. Um, and uh, now I'm working on picking out the right way, and I'm trying to read a code book. And now let me go down here to 690.7. Uh, one thing I'll mention is that a lot of these are um, are linked to the same sheet. So we can assume that all of these questions all link to the to the same sheet and the same thing that we need to be looking at, and that's 134. Um, maximum system voltage. Okay. So basically, we determine maximum system voltage by looking at the temperature where we are and determining um, how much we need to add to, to what we have and, and assume how much it will go up. Um, based on when the sun comes out and it's cool outside so that we have a safe system. Um, so this is telling us that uh, we can use the chart on uh, table 690.7 um, using that this is a new change in the 2011 that you can use the ASHRAE handbook um, temperature. You're probably going to be given a temperature, I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> on the test when you have a problem, but if you were to calculate your own, that's the formula that I'm having problem a problem with. Uh, 110 has uh, specific uh, requirements. Uh, when open circuit voltage temperature coefficients are supplied in the instructions for listed PV modules, they shall be used to calculate the maximum photovolts. So you always go by the specs on the module. That's going to give you a coefficient um, based on degrees Celsius, it will be like 0.31%, which is actually 0 0.0031, and you multiply that um, through a formula. Um, anyway, here comes Richard, but um, before he takes over, I'll show you that chart. Um, this is something that we, we still can, don't have, uh, we're, uh, we're uploading the documents, Sarah, so take your time. We, we're still working out some technical issues here, but... Okay. No hurry. No problem. 
so this is, uh, all right, let's see. Let's see, this is sheet 134, da da da, da. 134. Here we go. Here's the table. So this is a correction factor that we need to use to correct yeah. for temperature. Um, what someone asked me what was the difficult concept to master. It's hard for me to understand should I use that long formula or should I use this? And in the video, Bill Brooks uh, explains um, you need to use the module specifications and go through the formula. Um, and then uh, Mike Holt says, come on, this is a ridiculous formula. This is a, a people aren't really going to want to do this. Is there an easier way? And Bill Burke said, well, use the table. So the table is going to be more conservative than uh, the math that you would have done by the module spec, but the code says you're supposed to use the module spec. So, Richard, maybe you can clarify this for me. When determining maximum system voltage, do I use this factor or do I use the module spec factor? You know what I'm asking? So, as far are you talking about table 690.7? Yes. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, that table only exists for people taking tests because when you read the 690.7 article, um, it indicates that uh, if you have a VOC temperature coefficient uh, supplied by the manufacturer, that you use that. In the absence of that, you can use table 690.7. Uh, but uh, 690.7 um, only applies uh, to uh, uh, the table only applies to multi-crystalline or, or monocrystalline models, okay? And it only is for maximum voltage. As a PV designer, you're going to be working with those uh, temperature coefficients anyway because you need to establish what the low voltage is and what the high voltage is. So get comfortable with it. It's really, you know, once you understand it, you'll, you'll know how to do it and apply it every time. You know, so um, uh, I got a question from Neil Graham. It says, not polymodules. No, it's poly, polysilicon and monosilicon, crystal. Crystalline silicon are the two. Uh, uh, the only two, two uh, module types that will allow for the use of table 690.7. And then, even then, you're only supposed to use it when there's no VOC temperature coefficient supplied, okay? So um, uh, any thin film module, you're going to have to, you know, utilize the, 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 the table doesn't apply to thin film at all, so you're going to have to use whatever temperature co coefficient is, is supplied by the manufacturer. But more often than not, on a test, <laughs> they're going to say, you know, not give you a VOC temperature coefficient and have you go to that table 690.7. Bill Brooks, you know, he's, he's a, 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 you know, genius PV guy. Um, you know, he, he his perspective is, is probably true that if you were using monocrystalline or polycrystalline and you utilize that table, it's conservative and you'd be, you know, you'd be okay. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, you're still going to need to do temperature calculations on the low voltage side anyway, utilizing temperature coefficients, so you might as well have accurate numbers. So uh, in one class, I, I was explaining to uh, Neil Graham, I think was the one that asked the question of, about what was a difficult concept, and I was explaining to him that this was difficult for me because the advanced class that I took through Austin Community College, my instructor explained one formula, and the uh, an article I read. Okay, uh, we lost Sarah's audio and video, um, I believe. We still have her screen. Hmm. I wonder if Sarah knows that we have no audio. Oh, sorry, one sec. Okay, so she, she'll be calling back in in just a moment. 
Meanwhile, Ryan and I are trying to get these documents loaded to our website so you guys can have access to them and use them to study for your test. Okay, so are you working with the two thousand eleven highlighted industry? Okay, all right. Okay, so I can work on the other one then, the study guide database? Yeah. Okay, so I'm working on the study guide database. And, and study guide right. database is, is there for a link. It's already it uploaded. Okay, all right, so I'll work on that. And. Hey, sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure where I got tuned out, but um, I was just saying that I, I would like this clarified, and when I figure it out, I will post something in the forum, or uh, I'm sure that Richard could probably do it quicker. <laughs> I just want to know exactly which uh, which formula to follow. Yeah, I, I, I'm Wait. sorry, you probably didn't hear that. Uh, the In the Mike Holt DVD, he uses uh, even another formula that I uh, was um, – I don't know. It was a little bit different. It added one plus, and and I just didn't know what to do with that. <laughs> oh, you mean the one plus as a as using, utilizing it as a percentage versus an absolute value for voltage? That's that's probably what it was. It was basically um, okay. So the maximum system voltage is the VOC times your temperature. Uh, your low temperature minus your reference temperature, which is the 20, negative 25 degrees, um, times your temperature voltage percent, you know, coefficient, times the number of strings. In his formula, he had um, times the number of modules plus, in the string. Right. I'm right. sorry. Times the number of modules in the string. Um, yeah. So yeah, he, he had a one plus in there, and uh, I just that kind of threw me for a loop because I hadn't seen it done that way before. Right. The one plus was meant to represent of the 100% value, as in what the uh, uh, the the standard test condition. This we got the the roof of our building is about to be blown off. We're in the middle of a windstorm in Albuquerque, uh, so forgive the noise. Um, but yeah, so that one is meant to be 100%, right? As in this is the the VOC. Uh, uh, standard test condition value um, as a percentage basis, 100%. <laughs> Are you hearing this? Uh, <laughs> and um, the, uh, what you're adding to it is the percentage change uh, in, in voltage due to that cold temperature. So we do the same thing when we establish the absolute value, but instead of taking one plus some percentage number and then multiplying that against the VOC, and the number of modules in the string, we're actually taking the VOC and adding the actual uh, voltage change due to the cold temperature to it. So it's the same thing. It's just mathematically a different way of looking at it. Okay. Yep. So um, we are almost there with this stuff. So uh, keep talking, Sarah. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here um, to the Excel document and just go through, um, see if I can find some more interesting things to talk about. Um, when I clicked on this one, it takes me to uh, one of the links that I mentioned. You're going to have to look at the code book to find a, a larger explanation because it says um, A through E. And that's a lot of information, and so that's not here. You just know that you need to uh, reference the code book for that full so um, 690.10 basket of information. Um, I'm not really sure what this is about. We'll get this taken out. Richard, can you see my screen, and do you see this exclamation point? Um, one moment, please. Okay, I see your screen. Uh, the number in the cell is formatted as text or preceded by an apostrophe, okay? Um, let's just, uh, all right, is that table 690.10? Yeah. 
So uh, yeah, so you can actually right, right. So 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 see if in the formula bar, which says uh, the the function up there, the cell, ah. which says yeah, if you you got rid of that little apostrophe, then you'd probably get rid of the the little error. Okay, yeah. great. I'm right. I'm learning Excel little by little. <laughs> Sorry, thanks. That was a pretty simple change. Um, so let's see, what else can we talk about in here? Um, I tell you what, one thing that was is also uh, proving difficult uh, for me is is all the different things that you have to consider in all these different tables. Uh, it's really not that complicated. Um, you just have to know that you have to look at all these. Um, all these different tables in order to calculate oh, yeah. so, like, your higher capacity. And then um, um, we go back. So Article 300, I think, is where I spent most of my time because there were significant changes. This used to be, it even tells you formally 310.16 is now 310.15B16. And this is a really, really important table that you probably will use more than any other, uh, or at least I'm finding that I have to turn to it more. Uh, and this uh, is your wire opacity table. Yeah, that's what I want to see. You know the other one works, now I need to know that this one works. So, Conductor specifications. This is uh, a lot of information on this page. Let me make it a little bit bigger on my screen. I went ahead and put everything on one page. So you have to scroll down to see everything. This is actually several pages of the NEC, but it's all one very large table. Um, you'll probably find that you don't need very much of this table because there are only a few wire types that work with TV. Um, this is the primary one that we'll be using, THWN. Wait, I think that says four. It's a little hard to read. Uh, maybe it did say two. Let me zoom in on it. Um, I tried to make most of these tables uh, bigger than they actually were in the code book because they are a little hard to see. Um, Hey, Sarah? Yes. I think we finally got it together over here. And uh, right. before before the roof blows off this place and we die from choking on dust, <laughs> we're in the middle <laughs> of a sandstorm here. It, it's brutal. Uh, <laughs> we can't work inside because the Internet doesn't work for us inside, so we have to be outside in the dust storm uh, doing this webinar. So it's kind of crazy. <laughs> So if it's okay with you, I'm going to take take over. You didn't do it? Yeah, that's fine. But, okay, thanks. Work for you. Hold on. Time out. Uh, I'm going to double talking, check, sorry. guys. Okay, I'm going to double check everybody and make sure that uh, THWN2 should be here. And I see THWN4. And that's kind of tripping me out. Don't really know why that's this for. The two on the end of the the uh, number there basically means that it's rated for 90 degrees. Let me close this chat box. Get in my way. Okay. Now. Okay. I'm going to grab my real code book and I'll be right back. Now I'll go and see. Okay, let me see so that would be highlighted in the Okay. Table 
It's only just now make a break. Find this in the book. Okay, Sarah. Um, do you want while you're researching that code, um, I can go through the process of showing everybody how to access these documents now. Okay. If that's okay. All right. Yeah, that's me, great. Uh, take over as presenter, and then I'll share my desktop. Okay, so everyone will receive, or has probably already received, an email inviting you to the uh, to the um, newsletter for today. Okay, um, click to that page. Looks like we're having a little bit of, <clears throat> or you can navigate uh, from our website. Click on the Pound Solar MOOC tab, and so now from your newsletter you'll see these two calls to action. Um, one of them is uh, click here for the highlighted 2011 NEC. So you click there, and then it brings you to this page that tells you a little bit about the highlighted NEC and also gives you a form to fill out, which if you're using the same computer that you signed up for, you just hit submit because it will auto-populate auto those fields. Now, you can click on this PDF, and it's the, you know, the PDF of the code book, 879 pages. It's about 60 megabytes. It's going to take some time to download, okay? And then accompanying it is the highlighted NEC pages expanded. So you're not having to click, 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 click through all of those many pages of the NEC. You can actually use this expanded 2011 NEC so that you can go straight to the PDF number. Now, um, as, as Sarah mentioned, the way that document is set up right now is it's going to point you to the actual paper page, as in the page number that's listed at the bottom of the NEC, rather than the PDF page. So uh, we're going to make a correction to that, and once we do, we'll uh, 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 send out a link to everybody letting them know that the, the, uh, the highlighted NEC pages expanded document has been updated, and you can get the new copy of that as well. Okay? Um, so. So that's that one. Now, if you want the study guide database, study guide database is the other call to action, and it's basically the same process. Um, in your newsletter, you will see, click here to download the 2011 study guide database. Uh, this is another beefy file. It's one Excel sheet. Um, it's about 7.7 .7 megabytes, uh, um, not, not 70 megabytes like the NEC code is, but it's still going to take you a little time to download. Uh, so the form will auto-populate, you click Submit, and then there you have a 2011 study guide database for Excel, and, uh, and that's how you do it. So um, any questions on that? Okay. Um, Sarah, do you want me to turn it back over to you so you can uh, uh, finish up whatever it was that you uh, were covering? Um, well, I just want to say that I apparently I've made a tiny mistake in putting in table 310.104A, and I will make that correction, or I can tell you about it right now. Is it going to be, Richard, will it be hard for us to make an update on this file? No, well, we can make updates, but we'll just have to, you know, uh, repost a new version of it and send an email out um, as we read the document. So if anybody else finds any mistakes or bad references or maybe some things that we missed, you know, please send us an email and we're going to try to make this document as, as, as useful and, and accurate as possible. But the only way we can do that is by having a lot of eyes, you know, uh, going over it and, and uh, yeah. So. Okay, so, so the only thing, I, uh, apparently I, I either missed the page or I thought that it hadn't changed and it had. Uh, but THWN2 is not in the table that is in there. Um, the current code book, uh, the 310.104, Article 310.104, um, the wires, there, there are a few different types of wires in there, it looks like. 
Um, so I will change that. But in the meanwhile, you have the uh, NEC 2011 highlighted code. Just know that 310.104a uh, has the specifications for THWN2, uh, which will be a common wire that you'll be using in, in PV. Cool. All right. Well, I think we've given you guys something to chew on for a while. Those uh, those resources are, are golden. I mean, consider this. You know, it's an 879-page document. There's only about 80 to 100 pages that we're saying you need to have some understanding of. So, so uh, without this highlighted NEC and this index, you are you know may need to be familiar with the full 879 pages. But with this, you kind of are you know, narrow down to these few pages, if you can have some idea of what's on them, it's going to, you know, greatly increase your chances for success on the test. So um, uh, we love it, and we hope that you guys uh, are, are able to, to pass the test by using it. So, Sarah, anything else to add, or are we going to sign off here? <laughs> No, I don't think so, but um, I'm not the best resource in the world, but I'd be more than happy to help people, um, and I'm a MOOC participant as well. I have a blog page, AbundanceSolar.com, and uh, my email is uh, S-R-A-Y-M, as in Max, E-R at SoulPowerPeople.com, and uh, feel free to let me know comments or questions as well, and I'll do my best to help you. Great, and we'll uh, um, uh, uh, put the recording of this session. Uh, we'll add it to this newsletter uh, later tonight. If you're just getting in, or you missed the first half, or you know you want to review it again, we'll have it posted uh, on today's newsletter uh, this evening. So, so look for it there if you need to. All right. Okay. Cool. Thanks a lot, you guys. <laughs> really appreciate Thanks, it. Thank you, Jude. Take care. All right.